Okay, so welcome to a tutorial on the narrow bandpass filter. Right, so here if we'd have an integrator circuit, then we obviously know that the, uh, well, the frequency response, okay, the frequency, sorry, the response of an integrator, okay, circuit would be the same as the frequency response of a, l I mean, sorry, there, it would just, yeah, it'll just be the same as a low pass filter okay on the other hand if we'd have a differentiator on the other hand then of course the frequency response okay I'm just gonna write that down over here the frequency response of the differentiator okay we all know that the frequency response of such a differentiator circuit would be the same as that of a high pass filter all right now what I'm just trying to uh, you know tell you is that well these are the uh, various properties of the frequency response of the integrator and the differentiator now we can basically well combine them together okay if we just combine uh, basically a differentiator and an integrator circuit into one okay then we can basically design a narrow bandpass filter okay so let's just go and take a look at the circuit so here we are now we obtained this sort of a circuit okay which would basically uh, be known as a narrow bandpass filter okay well combining the uh, frequency response properties of a integrator and a differentiator okay so this is our narrow bandpass filter circuit that we were actually well trying to uh, you know get over here so this entire circuit that you can see over here is the circuit of a narrow bandpass filter so by the name you can obviously get an idea that uh, well the frequency response I mean the bandwidth of this kind of a filter is going to be very very narrow okay so that, I mean the pass band is going to be very narrow instead so if we would basically uh, well include uh, this sort of an input signal source over here okay so this is going to be an AC input signal alright there you go fine and so now if we, if we just uh, well take um, well this as the input voltage that is uh, V in so let's just write V in right over here okay just give me some time okay there you go so now providing this uh, input AC signal okay through from this particular source uh, whose you know frequency we can be basically you know vary over a range then of course what we're basically interested in is the frequency of this particular circuit so you can see uh, in this circuit if we just take a good look that uh, well starting from this point over here okay sorry there I forgot to name this resistor it's gonna be R2 okay so here if you can just uh, take a look over here that we have uh, C1 and R3 if we just take this part okay C1 and R3 together that you have uh, what we call basically a differentiator circuit okay on the other hand if you just will take the equivalent resistance of R1 and R2 together okay uh, this obviously going to be a parallel okay then the equivalent resistance of R1 R2 taken together uh, with the uh, capacitor C2 as the feedback element over here uh, and neglecting C1 and R3 we just get the idea of having a um, you know an integrated circuit on the other hand so we've just combined uh, both of the above circuits to obtain this particular narrow bandpass filter circuit so this circuit uh, employs what we just call the multiple uh, feedback technique okay so here we have multiple feedback provided okay so where are the multiple feedbacks so you can see that we have a feedback resistor R3 right over here and there's another feedback capacitor C2 okay so we have two feedback pots so that's why we're just calling the circuit a multiple feedback circuit right so this uses this sort of technique in order to uh, get the a narrow band pass uh, sort of a frequency response okay so talking about this frequency response if we just well uh, take a look over here then we would basically obtain a frequency uh, I mean sorry there uh, yeah a frequency uh, response curve of this particular circuit uh, so well, somewhat this way 
Okay, it'll basically look some something like this. Okay, so here we have well plotted the gain of this entire circuit on the y-axis, while we have the frequency plotted on the x-axis. So well, like all um, you know types of uh, bandpass filters, well this particular uh, circuit would have, I mean the response curve of this circuit would be maximum uh, at a particular value of frequency, okay? And that value of frequency would be known as the center frequency, FC, okay? And the gain at this particular uh, frequency, well, let's just call it AF, okay? So that's gonna be the maximum gain. So here AF is of course the gain, okay? It's the gain at the center frequency FC. Okay, so that's the center frequency of course. I'm just going to write that down over here. Alright, and then uh, obviously it's going to have, you know, upper and lower cutoff frequencies. So here goes the lower, sorry there, the line's a bit crooked. Okay, I'll just make it straight. So here is of course the lower cutoff frequency known as the FL. Okay, on the other hand this of course this particular line over here indicates the upper cutoff frequency FH okay and the gain okay falls to you know 1 by root 2 times its value so here it's going to be AF divided by that of root 2 okay so here the gain falls at 1 by root 2 times its value at uh, the center frequency at both the upper and the lower cutoff frequencies right so there you go now over here in this uh, frequency uh, response characteristic you can see that well this you know gap between that of the um, I mean the band or rather the range of frequencies between the uh, upper and the lower cut of frequencies over here represent what we call the bandwidth okay so the entire uh, pass band okay the pass band is the band of frequencies that will basically will available uh, at the output of this particular uh, narrow band, band pass filter circuit uh, would be available right over here. So those frequencies lying uh, within FL and FH, that's the frequency uh, you know above FL and below that of FH, all those frequencies would just, I mean electrical signals having those particular frequencies within FL and FH would just be appearing at the output of this narrow band pass filter circuit. And the uh, you know I mean the speciality of this particular uh, circuit is that it's it has a very narrow uh, bandwidth okay so here if we would just well uh, talk about its bandwidth okay so here is bandwidth BW okay so that's the bandwidth of this particular circuit I'm just gonna write that down over here it's gonna be given by well the same as in case of the uh, previous uh, types of bandpass filters that is FH I mean the difference of FH and FL okay and then it's gonna have a quality factor Q okay given by the center frequency divided by that of the bandwidth okay so if we just you know put it this way FC divided by that of FH minus that of FL okay so this is particularly the same as that of the uh, you know uh, other uh, bandpass filters but well uh, taking a look at its uh, characteristic if you just well uh, think of comparing it with uh, the bandpass filter that we had uh, demonstrated previously uh, there you go. So here, this particular characteristic will uh, demonstrate the case uh, for the bandpass filter that we had, uh, you know, demonstrated previously. So as you can see over here, that it had a uh, well, comparatively a wider bandwidth. Okay, here the difference of FL and FH was, you know, pretty much larger than the difference of FL and FH that we have for this particular curve for the narrow bandpass filter. Okay, so due to the uh, you know the lower magnitude of the bandwidth, okay, if we just well take it as a bandwidth one, okay, and if we just take for this particular curve, if we just will assume the bandwidth is just denoted with a band B BW two, okay, so in that case we we may easily say that BW one is well less than BW two, okay. So here you can see that due to uh, its decrease in the value of the bandwidth of this particular uh, narrow bandpass filter circuit that we have over here, we just call it the narrow bandpass filter. And uh, that's quite, uh, you know, common sense. So uh, talking from the uh, design point of view, if we'd basically uh, want to you know, design this particular circuit, then we have to satisfy a very important, uh, you know, condition that the gain, okay, AF. So if we just take the gain AF, that's the gain at the center frequency, it should be, well, less than two times the square of the quality factor for that 
narrow band pass filter circuit that we've just uh, demonstrated over here okay and uh, well furthermore uh, the resistors that we've just used over here that is well let's say R1 R2 and uh, well R3 now you can just see that well uh, here the feedback uh, resistor R3 and uh, the resistor connected to the non-inverting input of this particular op amp well they have you know the same values okay so uh, the design of this particular uh, filter is guided by you know carefully choosing I mean it, it basically is essential to carefully choose the values of the uh, you know resistors over here now one thing we can just uh, you know basically uh, keep the same that is the value of the capacitor so we can just keep the value of the capacitor C1 equal to that of C2 let's say if we just take it as C so then in that case I'll just uh, rub C1 and C2 off okay so there you go so if we just keep the value of this particular capacitor same then we can even maintain the same bandwidth okay and uh, the same quality factor and keep the circuits response rate fairly the same uh, by you know carefully uh, calculating the values of R1, R2 and R3 respectively so if you just take a look at the mathematical uh, part of the circuit then of course the R1 that's the resistor 1 okay its value is you know given by this sort of relationship saying that well it, it's going to be equal to well Q divided by that of 2 pi this times the center frequency times the capacitance okay uh, that's the C1 or C2 you can just take a, either of the values because uh, you know they have the same magnitude that's C okay uh, times that of AF that's the frequency I mean the gain at the center frequency okay so that's how R1 is given and then we can calculate well uh, the value of R3 it has got a very uh, short expression it's equal to well Q divided by that of pi times center frequency and the capacitance could be uh, C1 could be C2 since they have the same magnitude on the other hand well if we want to calculate R2 then we have to use this sort of an expression over here uh, well that's going to be Q it's going to be a long expression that's Q divided by that of 2 pi FC okay multiplied by C over here and then finally 2 Q time I mean 2 times Q square minus that of the gain at the center frequency that's AF okay so these are the necessary uh, you know uh, relationships with which we can basically find the values of R1, R3 and R2 so these values need to be carefully chosen in order to uh, design this particular filter and also you can uh, you'll al also see uh, if you just uh, from these uh, you know relationships that I've just given over here that well R3 and R1 are well basically related to each other uh, so they can be just expressed as a ratio so we can just say that AF equals to uh, well R3 divided by that of 2 times R1 okay so this particular relationship connects the values of R3 R1 and the gain at the center frequency together okay so these are the basic uh, you know uh, numerical uh, formula I mean sorry there uh, you know basic formula that you need uh, talking about this particular circuit from the design point of view all right now one thing I'd like to point out over here that in order to design this circuit it's very essential that we know the value of the center frequency and the quality factor of this particular circuit beforehand okay only then can we just apply these relationships in order to uh, get the necessary values of R1, R3 and R2 and then choose a uh, particular value of the uh, capacitor C1 and C2 so that both of them have the same values okay that's equal to C so given we know the center frequency and the quality factor only then can we basically design this circuit alright so now if we just uh, uh, well uh, there is of course another uh, you know chance that the center frequency that we have over here it might you know uh, basically deviate a bit okay now if, if it might be required by the uh, designer to shift the center frequency to some other uh, you know value okay so in that case we may uh, you know use one technique over here now if you take FC dash to be the new center frequency that's the newer uh, I mean new center frequency to which uh, it's going to be the frequency to which the value would be changed to okay from the previous center frequency uh, FC okay so here FC is the previous center frequency okay now this change in center frequency could be brought about by altering the value of this particular resistor R2 
Okay? So if we just go back once again, then of course if R2 is the the previous value of the uh, resistor R2 right over here, okay? And now if we just take its new changed value, okay, or rather altered value as well R2 dashed, so this is actually the, then using the equation, well, R2 dashed, well, that's equal to R2 times that of, well, FC divided by that of FC dashed whole squared, okay? By using this particular equation, we can basically change the value of R2 dash. I mean, if you just, well, change the value of the center frequency, then it, it obviously requires the value of R2 to be changed from R2 to R2 dashed. Now, that value of R2 dash can be just given uh, by this particular equation that we have over here. Now, this change could be brought about without any change in the previous value of gain or bandwidth of the above circuit. Okay? So, that said, we just, well, wind up the necessary details that would, you would basically require to design this narrow band pass filter circuit that we have just demonstrated in this tutorial. So with that, we just, uh, well, reach the end of this tutorial. So it's going to be a short goodbye from here on. And we're going to meet you next in our forthcoming tutorial. So till then, it's just uh, goodbye for now. And thanks for watching.